Yeah, it's actually a pretty nice vertical axe tree. What rootstock is it on, John? These are 26. 26. Actually. This, so, yeah, this site's not real strong. We got better vigor here. Uh, under the older regimes that we've been teaching uh, the vertical axe, what we would have suggested is leave the tree tall at planting, don't head it down, but leave the feathers up. And so I'm, I don't know how many feathers it had, but let's suppose it had this one and these three feathers. It probably four. had very little pruning, to be honest with you. So okay. that these feathers, when you see them, how they've grown in the sort of the natural position, <coughs> they've grown in the upright to fill the space. Because this is six feet or so. What? It's supposed to be two meters, yeah. Six and a half feet. So that starting in years two, three, and four, we would do like we did over there, very little pruning, keep most of the branches. But starting about year four, we start reducing the number of lower tier branches. Basically, the rule was from chest height down, count the number of branches, and ultimately we need four. How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We need four. So we begin a three-year process of taking out three or two per year. That's critical to try to identify which are the ones we want to remain in the end because the ones we would prefer to remain in the end are in an X pattern coming in this direction, diagonal across the row, going that way, going that way, and going that way. This is where the grower himself should do this limb selection because you could screw up trees by taking out the wrong limbs. So there's 12 limbs between there and there. Let's allow ourselves three this year. Maybe it should be two, but let's allow ourselves three. Which would be the three you'd want to take off? Now, who said that? Now, I bet you 10 years ago you wouldn't have said that. Maybe not. Because 10 years ago, most people said, man, that's a nice bottom scaffold. I like that branch. It's going to be there. It's going to be strong. But over the years, working with that kind of system, a lot of more people are saying, you know, the smaller branches are better and easier. So I agree. That's one I want to take off. Let's identify which might be the permanent branches. I really like this one. It's coming out in this direction and diagonal. If this one's gone, I really like that one. That's a great branch. So this one's coming out into the tractor alley. It's not so great. What about on that side? That one and this one. So, put your loppers horizontal again. Take that off. Which is the next one? We know we're going to keep these. I'm just going to columnize that just for looks. <laughs> Okay, what are the next one? These are the permanent ones. I've got this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. The two worst are these two, this one and this one, because they're the biggest. The smaller ones are the better ones. So we could take off this one in the middle this year, open it up a little bit. Uh, we could also take off this one. Doesn't really matter. But we get a process. Over the next three years, we're going to get it down to just those four in the bottom, because this will be gone. We'll have those two, these will eventually be gone. And what we'll end up with is this little stuff here, 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 and then as we go up, little stuff all the way. And so you'll end up with a very narrow columnar top based on small diameter branches, and then you'll manage it just like that tall spindle. You'll have uh, all small diameter branches up the tree, but you'll have this bottom table of branches. Now the one thing that we didn't used to emphasize enough, and that is keep these bottom branches semi-columnarized. Don't let them build big, wide things. And I wish there was a little older one we could talk about. But the point is that it's hard to get good color down here in the bottom regardless of what you do. And if you allow it to build side branches, all the fruit hanging underneath get left in the first picking. You all know that. When you send your pickers through on Mac, that's the fruit that gets left. By columnarizing these bottom four, more of those fruits will have enough color to be picked on the first pick. Pretty simple. You can see in almost all these, a beautiful tree. You know, there's really nice tree hidden in there. We just got to get rid of a couple of branches. This one is a prime case because if you look at the diameter right here, it's not that much different than the diameter right above it. Any time a branch has similar diameter to the leader right above it, it's affecting it and it's got to go. And so without even thinking through whether that's a permanent branch or not, I know it's not. But we take that one off right off the bat. Then we'll try to think about this tree. This is a, ni a nice tree to talk about. Uh, I don't know how tall we are in the snow. We're not that much snow, are we? <clears throat> this is an interesting tree because we got a group of four branches. One, two, three, four down there. Kind of at my knee height. 
and then a little bit of a gap and then we got other branches up here if we have to leave four between there and there are we going to leave four up here or those four down there what I personally leave the bottom four, but you're probably not going to take out the bottom. Why do you want to take out the bottom? It's too short. I want to bend over. Yeah. It's just going to be on the cliff. <laughs> that, that's Look, what they're not going to get us better, and the light's not going to be as good down there. Can you train for the herbicide to stop it? That's another reason. The, we used to try to keep too many low branches, and over the course of time, we found that it just works much better to try to raise those up to hip height. And so where you have the option like this, go ahead and start eliminating those bottom ones and make what you can out of these up here. Now maybe up these up here aren't ideal, but this is a really nice branch. And especially if it bends down with crops, see how far it can bend before it gets affected by the herbicide or anything else. Uh, similarly, you know, this one over here might not be ideal, but it could sort of be reoriented a little bit so it's not directly in the tractor alley and it would be great. So I'd say let's take off two or three of these. Well, I already took off one. So we can only get two more. What should we do? Forgetting about the school kids. And what else? One of these. You don't like these up here? They're both tooth dominant. We've already taken off that one biggest, probably enough for this year. Maybe we'll just leave it. Um, one of the things, let's just columnarize everything and see how it looks. So I'm not adverse to just leaving it like that, but uh, I don't mind taking off another one just to heck of it. <laughs> but I really think we should move up into the hip height for the lower branch where we have the option. I always tell people cut to your knee height, but nobody's knee is as high as mine. <laughs> Some of them? All of them. All of them. What, are, what are they? These are Buckeye Gala, planted in 2002. They're different. Each tree is a different rootstock. This one happens to be supporter four. They didn't crop initially. It looks like they've cropped because they're loaded with spurs. This is M26. So this is a, supposed to be, a, this is a vertical axe style tree. Uh, it's not the same as a tall spindle because this will have a permanent bottom tier of branches. And the sort of strategy with these, this style tree is to have four lower bottom scaffold branches that are columnarized. And then above that point, to have only small fruiting branches. And so we prune this in basically two, three steps. One is uh, we look at the top of the tree and make sure there's an identified leader. Now sometimes as they crop heavily and the leader gets bent over like that, you might want to cut that off and replace it with another one. But we definitely want to make sure that the top of the tree has a single dominant axis. Then the second part of it is to look basically above these bottom branches and take off any branch that seems to be larger than optimum. The, pre, the ideal ones are these. These are really nice. Even that size. This one's getting to be a little bit large. But the last step, or maybe it could be the first step, is the bottom. Basically from here down. We've got to have only four branches. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's again a question of identifying those that are the best branches. Uh, <coughs> This one over here is kind of low and underneath that one, that's a really nice permanent branch, so I'm going to eliminate that one right off the bat. And this one here is a dominant, too big for the size of the trunk, although it is kind of going in that nice direction. It's really not the right bigger level. So those are my two lower branches. Yeah, I would have taken that one. This one? But it's sticking sort of the diagonal, especially when you see how I'm going to columnarize it. It's going to be just <laughs> We forgot that for a sec. So all of the lower branches I'm going to columnarize so there's a single axis to them. Uh, with Gala, sometimes we can just shorten things back. Uh, with Gala also, um, where we have this sort of thing and it pencils down and we have another more upright, I often we'll take off the low hanging stuff. 
and often we'll just take off a few squares underneath because it has too many flowers. This one over here is going to be columnarized as well. This one's going to be columnarized. I, I want to ask a question though. Now you took off this branch that I didn't like here either. But we're growing a lot of air over here. <laughs> nice and thickened, okay. but you got a beautiful color. Right you just got to think about it. I often, uh, I got to tell my little stories. I have these stories I tell all over the world. <clears throat> often when I get a pruning demonstration, I get a question like that about, but sometimes it's more detailed. Well, should I take off this side of the branch or should I take off that side of the branch? And I tell them, you know, this world's got lots of big problems. There's Iraq, <laughs> Afghanistan. <coughs> Those are kind of the smallest problems of the whole world. Find something bigger to worry about. <laughs> So, just columnarize a little bit, the top looks really nice. I forgot to columnarize this one over here. Yeah. And, how about that one? Which one? Three coming out of you. The whole thing. 